Urchins, parents, teachers, and my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Today's gospel message is from John 2, 1 through 11. This message is all about Jesus' first miracle that marked the beginning of his ministry. The wedding of Cana miracle took place after Jesus fasted for 40 days and was tempted by Satan. Three days later, he came to Cana where he attended a wedding feast with Mary, the mother of Jesus. Back in Jesus' time, a wedding feast usually lasted for days. Some of them could have lasted for a week or more. During the wedding feast, they ran out of wine. Jesus' mother approached him and said, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. What does this statement mean? Jesus felt that his time had not come for him to perform miracles or the work of his father. After Jesus had said these words, Mary told the servants that they must follow everything Jesus tells them to do. After Mary went away, Jesus saw six stone jars used for ceremonial washing. Jews cleansed their hands, cups, and vessels with water before meals in these jars. Each large pot held from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water, and the servants filled the water jugs up to the brim. Then Jesus said to the servants to take some of the water and give it to the banquet master. They did as they were instructed, and when they heard what the banquet master had said, they were in awe. The banquet master had said that it was the best wine he had ever tasted. What was the purpose of this miracle? It was to manifest Jesus' glory so that his disciples and others could believe in him. In the Gospels, Jesus' appearance showed both the communal, personal and communal nature of the new covenant. Not only did Jesus produce a large quantity of wine, but the quality of it astonished the banquet master. Now let's move on from the wedding of Cana to the celebration of St. Ignatius, alias the third, which is today's Pernod. Who was this saint? St. Ignatius, alias the third, was born on October 30th, 1867 in modern Turkey. He was the second son of Corpuscopus, Abraham, and Miriam, and Christine Nasiri. He had four brothers and three sisters. After the death of his mother, Nasiri was raised in the care of his elder sister, Helena, where he was exposed to religion and went to a seminary at a young age. After his studies in the seminary, he was ordained a deacon, then a priest, then a bishop, and renamed Moravanius. After Patriarch Aved Alovo passed away on November 26, 1915, Moravanius was elected Patriarch and assumed the throne in 1917. Moravanius III was the last Patriarch to reign at the Kurkoma, Dairo, and Merdin, in Marden, the seat of the Patriarchate for most of the second millennium. A couple of years later, he was asked to come to India. Given his cardiac problems, his doctors attempted to dissuade him from a trip to India in vain. His 75-year-old sister also could not persuade the patriarch. His holiness said to her, Death is inevitable whether here or in India. I would rather sacrifice my life for the sake of our children in the long run. The memory of the holy patriarch is revered throughout the Syrian Orthodox Church, and especially in Manjimukara, where thousands of pilgrims reach the tomb by foot on the annual feast day, February 13th. Other traditions to remember the saint are by the commemoration in the Holy Qurbana and intercession prayers with to him. More Elias III is the only patriarch of Antioch whose means are in Dominicana. Fifty-five years later, more Ignatius Elias III was named the saint by his successor, Patriarch Ignatius Zaka I. He incorporates the spirit of interfaith, conversation, unwavering faith, and selfless service. He leaves behind a testimony about the power of unity and faith in overcoming religious conflict. St. Ignatius, at least the third, was a remarkable leader and left an impact in the church community. Let us also remember that the Great Lent starts tomorrow. The Great Lent starts on February 12th, which is Monday, to April 7th, which is on an Easter Sunday. Why do we celebrate this Lent? The purpose of the Great Lent is to prepare the faithful to not only commemorate, but to enter into the passion and resurrection of Jesus. I hope you have gained some new insight on the first miracle performed by Jesus, St. Ignatius, alias the third, and the great man. I hope you have a wonderful day while reflecting this message. Thank you.